Hello and welcome everyone to today's webinar on forest data and transparency. Zoom in on the experience of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. You should see on your screen right now a poll. Um, please fill us in. This will um, help us with our statistics, understand our participants for the future. That'd be great. Just take a moment. Thank you. I see the number of participants is rapidly growing. Welcome everyone. Almost at 100. So people that have just joined, um, you should see a poll on your screen. So please just take a moment, fill it in. Hi everyone and welcome to those who are newly joining us. Hello. Um, yeah, if you see the poll on your screen, please just fill that in. That'll help us. Thanks. The, the uh, webinar will start in just a few seconds. We're just waiting for more people to join us. We are now what, 100 participants. Hello. Hello everyone, nice to greet you all there in the chat. Hi hey everyone, and for those who have just joined us, please just fill in the poll that should be on your screen right there. And yeah, if you want to also say hello in the chat, you're very welcome to. Hi everyone. Hello and welcome to today's webinar on forest data and transparency, zooming in on the experience of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Thank you all for joining us today. Um, it's really nice to see so many people online, especially warm welcome to those who are joining us today from the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Thank you so much for being here today. Today's webinar is the third in a series of webinars revolving around transparency, climate change and forests and how enhancing transparency can be achieved and how achieving this can actually enhance our collective climate action. Two months ago, we spoke to colleagues in Costa Rica to learn about their experience in setting up a national forest monitoring system. And today we move across the Atlantic Ocean to zoom in 
and to speak to colleagues in DRC about their own unique experience in setting up a national forest monitoring system there. It's fantastic to see so many of you online. We're at 126 participants, that's great. Um, we're really looking forward to interacting with you all during the moderated Q&A session, which will be following our presentations, so stick around for that. Um, today, we will hear from Mr. Ramid Anuncio, who is the coordinator for FAO on National Forest Monitoring and Red Plus in Africa. Um, he will give us a overview of the activity in the region. Then we will hear from Ms. Rocio Condor, who is coordinating the global project CBIT Forest, which focuses on strengthening capacities for forest monitoring and transparency. And finally, and most importantly, we'll hear directly from DRC, from Mr. Benjamin Trachambe, the Secretary General of the Ministry of Environment and Sustainable Development in DRC, who will tell us about his work and the ongoing experience of the DRC in monitoring its forests. Following these three presentations, we will have a discussion session where we want to hear from you. In total, the session will last for one hour. And I think now I will pass over to Christina, my colleague, Christina Petraki. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, Emily. And welcome everyone to this uh, international technical webinar on, on for forest uh, data transparency. Uh, I just wanted to mention that this is one of the various uh, international webinars that we uh, usually uh, organize with Agrinium and with the United Nations Economic and Social Commission for the Pacific. The idea is really uh, to share experiences uh, and to give an opportunity to everyone to have access to this knowledge and uh, really to try to, uh, to wor work towards sustainability. In fact, the common thread uh, throughout all the, the webinars that we have de uh, delivered through the FAO eLearning Academy, the common thread is always sustainability, of course, and climate change. So I invite you all to have a look at the eLearning Academy because there are a number of resources and eLearning courses available for free, on, also on forest uh, transparency. And you can also access the recording of the, this webinar afterwards and of all the previous uh, webinars that were conducted. So um, I hope uh, you will enjoy the program. We have a very tight and very interesting program for you today. And I am extremely pleased to pass the floor to our colleague from FAO that will be talking to us a little bit more about forest transparency. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Christina, for the introduction to the eLearning Academy. Um, let me introduce myself as well. My name is uh, Emily Donegan. I work for the National Forest Monitoring Team at FAO, and I'll be your moderator for today's session. The Enhanced Transparency Framework is something that has only recently been developed and is yet to fully come into place. So I and perhaps most people um, on this call today are not experts on this new topic. And I'm really excited today to learn all as well about uh, how a country as big and as extensively forested as DRC is managing and monitoring its forests. So now that you know who I am, um, just, yeah, please feel free to say hi in the chat. If you can still access the poll, it'd be great if you could pop in your name and affiliation in there. Um, just a little a quick word there on the format about the format of this Zoom. This is a webinar, so your microphones are muted. However, the session is, as Christina mentioned, all about interacting and hearing from you. So please don't hesitate to pose your questions in the Q&A box, which you will see at the bottom of your screen, um, to each of our speakers. And you can pose your question in either French or English. If someone has already posed a question that interests you, you can give it a thumbs up. Um, and today, my colleague Anatoly Pultohido will be helping me select the most appropriate questions for our speakers. Um, so now you will notice that there is both a Q&A box and a chat. So um, to make it easier for us to find and respond to your questions to the speakers, we do ask you to please keep the questions in the Q&A box. However, if you have any technical problems or general comments, you can please post them in the chat as well as saying hi to other participants and all of us here as well as you're doing now, that's great. Um, one, 
one other important thing to note about today's session is that we have the session being simultaneously translated into French. So in order to switch to the French channel, please use the button at the bottom of your Zoom screen, its interpretation, and then select the language that you want to listen to. So I hope I've given you a good overview of how we're going to spend the next hour and how we can interact together with each other here on the Zoom platform. Without further ado, I'd like, you in, like to introduce you now to our first speaker, uh, Mr. Remy Denuncio from FAO. Remy is a forestry officer and Red Plus and NFM coordinator for Africa. He will provide us with a general overview of national forest monitoring activities going on in Africa. Thanks for being with us here today, Remy. Over to you. Thank you very much, Emily. Can you confirm that you can hear me? Yes. Yes, excellent. I will uh, share my screen. Um, is that all right? Can you see my presentation? I see it, yes. Okay, excellent. Well, thank you very much for giving the floor. My name is uh, Remy Denuncio. I'm a forestry officer in FAO. I'm coordinating the NFM Red Plus work in the Africa region. Uh, I'm very happy to welcome you, uh, in particular, Mr. Secretary General of the Ministry of Environment and Forests in DRC, Mr. Benjamin Tagrande, and uh, all of you participants to this webinar. It's really exciting to, to have such a wide audience. Um, um, I would like, before we go into the enhanced and fun free framework, and the specific case of DRC, uh, we thought it would be good to give you a very quick glimpse of what FAO is doing uh, in terms of a national forest monitoring system, in particular in the Africa region. Um, as you know, um, NFMS, national forest monitoring systems, are an essential element in the fight for climate change. Um, and um, what we do in FAO is supporting countries get prepared for that. Um, so let me give you a, a brief overview of this. Um, and I will talk about forest monitoring and about um, climate action. On traditionally in FAO, we are supporting countries to set up um, national forest inventories, uh, national forest monitoring systems. Um, right now and for the past 10 years, we've, uh, we've had a very strong component on Red Plus and on helping countries set up measurement, reporting and verification system. Um, we also have a very, we have developed a very uh, comprehensive, very complete tools uh, for um, forest monitoring and assessment. We have uh, helped countries design, build up, implement, analyze their forest inventory data, for instance. And this is really our traditional role, uh, looking at those, um, at those um, monitoring elements of a forest. Um, and the data that is being produced within those uh, within those um, projects and components are then being reported by the countries to international processes like the UNFCCC or to the, um, to the Forest Carbon Partnership for the World Bank programs, for instance. Uh, it's also being used in the FRA process, uh, the Forest Resource Assessment of FAO, which is updated every five years. Um, <clears throat> we, we, we are helping countries to build up those forest monitoring systems and they in turn help us to build more global methodologies that are being used at larger scales than just national. So we also have very strong regional components um, and we have in particular two projects that are being uh, currently implemented. One in Central Africa with CAFI, uh, the Central African Forest Initiative, and one in West Africa uh, with uh, funding from the Swedish uh, Corporation Agency to look at the drivers of deforestation and degradation and understand the dynamics behind those things. The tools that we develop, the, the, the framework in which we help countries build up their skill, help us in turn serve a purpose that is larger than just monitoring. Um, we don't monitor just for the purpose of monitoring. The, the, what our cluster is trying to turn to and the project that we are developing uh, now and for the next um, years are really aiming at restoring uh, ecosystems and improving livelihoods that depend on those ecosystems. So very briefly, we have, we have some action on, on the forest ecosystem within the UN decade on restoration. Uh, for instance, we are um, paying particular attention to peatland and the fragile ecosystem that they can represent. And we have projects that are across uh, both Congos in Congo and DRC, and that is being uh, led by the German Initiative for Climate. 
Um, very recently, we had, a, we had a project on the development of zero deforestation value chains um, approved by the Green Climate Fund, and we're really happy to, to start those activities that will be in Ivory Coast. Um, and, um, and, and then we are also paying specific attention to community-based forestry. Um, and uh, in the case of DRC, we have integrated programs, for instance, that are being led by uh, CAFI and FONARED. And um, we are uh, also looking at sustainable forest management led by communities in a whole range of countries in West Africa. So <clears throat> what, we, what we really do in FAO is, is developing tools and we've been paying specific attention to free open source solutions to develop uh, those tools. Uh, in particular, we have the Open Forest Initiative that is uh, now almost 10 years, which is, is kind of mature. And uh, the, the tools that are uh, inside the initiative range from field work to satellite-based um, uh, processing tools. And uh, you can see here an example of, uh, of DIAF, the direction in, in DRC, which is using those tools to monitor forests and using um, uh, near real-time uh, data from satellite to look at deforestation and degradation events. Um, FAO has partnered with, um, with uh, Planet, a satellite data provider, through funding from Norway, from NICFI, the Norway Initiative for, for Climate, uh, to procure these images. And DRC was one of the pilot countries that have been using this data for the past year. And the contract is, uh, is now finished, but I'm really, really happy to tell you that today we have great, really great news that came up just this morning. Uh, and it's that's the, the example that we drew from um, this experience using very, very high frequency data of satellite imagery to monitor for deforestation and degradation has been scaled up by NICFI and they are now covering the whole uh, tropic area as you can see here on this, uh, on this little slide. Uh, that's a contract has just been, uh, just been issued and uh, we will have a four year procurement at global level of monthly uh, mosaics with really high resolution which will really help monitor and see uh, any any events and any disturbance and take decisions that are related to this thing. So I'm very excited to to tell you about this and um, we will probably talk about this later. Uh, I, I think I gave you a very quick glimpse of what we're doing in terms of monitoring in terms of climate action related to forest. I will uh, uh, pass the floor to my colleague Rocio, who will give you uh, an overview of the, um, the Sigit uh, forest and the enhanced transparency framework. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rumi, for that overview. Um, just before passing it to passing the floor to Rocio, I just wanted to quickly remind everyone um, to please put any questions for Rumi and any of our other speakers in the Q&A box in the, in the bottom bar and keep your technical questions or if you have issues in the chat so that we can help you address them. Um, I think that was a really nice overview that you just gave us, Rumi, on how forest monitoring relates to climate action and ecosystem restoration. And it's really exciting to see that last slide that you shared that's kind of completely brand new, that's just today. So that's really exciting. Um, I'd now like to pass the floor over to Rocio Condor. She is coordinating the global project, Building Global Capacity to Increase Transparency in the Forest Sector, CBIT Forest, of the FAO, financed by the CBIT Trust Fund of the GEF, the Global Environment Facility. Um, she's coordinating activities to make forest data more transparent, accessible and available and helping developing countries meet the Paris Agreement's Enhanced Transparency Framework. The FAO and GEF have been partners for nearly 20 years, and this partnership has been key to addressing critical issues at the intersection of agriculture and the environment. Um, FAO GEF projects currently make up over 20% of the current GEF 7 portfolio. The CBIT Trust Fund is one trust fund under the GEF, and the project that you will now hear about from its creator and coordinator, Rocio, is one of them. So over to you, Rocio. Thanks for being with us. Thank you very much. Uh, Emily, do you hear me? Yeah, loud and clear. Perfect. So uh, thank you very much. Um, let me know also if you can see uh, the presentation. Yes, I can Thank see you it. very much, uh, Remy and Emily, also for the introduction. And let me share with you all uh, three key messages. Forests are the largest uh, carbon and biodiversity reservoirs on the earth. 
and they are essential source of food, goods and services that are vital to livelihoods and of the poorest and rural communities. Forests plays a central role in combating climate change. Therefore, given the significant potential of forest, improving the transparency of forest related uh, data and information within the enhanced transparency of the Paris Agreement is timely. The Paris Agreement and its call for better and more transparent data are instrumental. But how do we ensure that? Establishing and running a national forest monitoring system constitutes a complex scientific technical exercise and an organizational institutional challenge. Information and knowledge generated by a national forest monitoring system need to feed into and support national and international forest related processes. Therefore, they need to be multi-purpose, implying intersector communication and coordination. A fully functional multi-purpose national forest monitoring system allows countries to respond to their own forest data needs, as well as reports on forest related emissions and removals. What have we learned uh, in 2020? The COVID-19 pandemic is intensifying data scarcity problems when timely, reliable information has become even more essential for immediate policy responses and for monitoring national and international development agendas. The COVID-19 has reinforced the importance of data for interpretation and dissemination. Likewise, forest data transparency is key to supporting um, higher levels of ambition for the roles of forests in climate change action. How is FAO contributing to the efforts towards implementation of the transparency framework under the Paris Agreement? There are two global projects. FAO uh, has CBIT, a follow project, and also a CBIT forest. And I will talk this in these coming slides. Building global capacity to increase transparency in the forest sector, CBIT Forest, is a two-year project of the FAO financed by the Capacity Building Initiative for Transparency Trust Fund of the Global Environment Facility, aiming to strengthen the institutional and technical capacities of developing countries to collect, analyze, disseminate forest-related data. CBIT forests build on already existing efforts of the FAO to support countries on forest monitoring at global and national levels. How? Organizing sub-regional and national workshops to build capacities and enhance their national forest monitoring systems. 26 countries targeted as well as 187 countries and territories included as part of the global network of the national correspondents for the Global Forest Resource Assessment, FRA. Strengthening the network of key partners such as the UNFCCC and the Global Forest Observation Initiative, as well as other UN agencies such as UNEP and UNDP, by seeking cooperation to work on products or activities of the project. Upgrading FAO's FRA 2020 reporting and dissemination platform to make forest data reporting easier in the future. And this platform has just been released on the 21st of July with a series of key resources, including the FRA 2020 main report and the 236 detailed reports of all countries and territories. Developing also knowledge and training material, including the e-learning course released on the 15th of July to enable access to knowledge about the enhanced transparency framework and forests to anyone, anywhere building and maintaining continuous awareness of the project and sharing case studies in multiple language on forests and transparency, being the Democratic Republic of the Congo the second after Costa Rica. Developing a spreadsheet-based tool to facilitate the assessment of gaps and needs in countries' national forest monitoring system. And let me focus in my next slides on the new products we have developed. So we have the posture in multiple languages of the project. We have the case study of Costa Rica already launched. And today we have uh, the, we will be presenting the case study from DRC. Let me briefly introduce some key information of the National Forest Monitoring System assessment tool and new related products. The NFMS assessment tool aimed to assist countries in strengthening their NFMS, 
by facilitating understanding of FAO's voluntary guidance on national forest monitoring, identifying needs and gaps, as well as helping to build work plans and measure progress. Then FMS assessment tool is available in the new e-learning course on forest and transparency under the Paris Agreement. The course can be taken online or download. Here you have the lessons of the e-learning course. And in lesson two, you can access to the NFMS assessment tool, which is already available in three languages, English, French, and Spanish. Some support material I would like to share with you. Today, we are also presenting a new product, which is the Quick Guidance, soon also available in multiple languages, as well as then short information notes. I thank you very much for your attention and it's back to you, Emily. Thanks. Thank you so much, Rocio, for sharing this material with us and giving, giving us a bit of a background on the development since the Paris Agreement towards the Enhanced Transparency Framework and helping us understand how forest monitoring fits in there and what it will mean in practice. Um, now we're about to hear from DRC a country that is already putting into practice a national forest monitoring system that is functional and transparent. Um, from DRC today, we have Mr. Benjamin Toirambe Bamuninga, who is the Secretary General at the Ministry of Environment and Sustainable Development of the Demo Democratic Republic of the Congo. He coordinates the conception and elaboration of policies, strategies and programs in DRC, a country which has one of the largest extensive forests in the world. He is specialized in both ecology and in plant and wood biology from the universities of Kizangani in the DRC and Ghent in Belgium. Since 1991, he's held several positions of responsibility in various fields, including nature conservation and Red Plus. And uh, since 2002, he's been working as a university teacher and as a, nat a national and international expert with several organizations. And he took on the role as secretary general of the ministry in 2017. So I just wanted to briefly remind everyone as well before that um, if you don't understand French, please switch into the interpretation channel down below. Thank you. So thank you very much, Mr. Toirambe, for being here with us online today. The floor is yours. Can you hear me okay, Mr. Toirambe? And if so, then please just start your presentation. Thanks. Merci beaucoup, chers amis. Maintenant, je vais partager avec vous ce que nous avions fait dans le cadre du projet Système de suivi national de forêts pour promouvoir la gestion durable des forêts. Pour commencer, je remercie tout le monde eh, qui qui est en train de nous suivre à travers cette vidéoconférence. Je commence par le contexte et la problématique de pourquoi nous nous sommes engagés dans ces projets. Au terme des contextes, nous disons qu'il y a une nécessité de réduire des émissions provenant de la déforestation et de la dégradation des forêts, tout simplement parce que c'est une priorité stratégique nationale dans notre pays, la République démocratique du Congo. Avec les capacités techniques limitées du pays, ce système sert à produire des outils nécessaires au suivi de la couverture forestière et de ces changements. Et aussi, prendre des décisions politiques informées relatives à la réduction des émissions résultant de la déforestation et de la dégradation des forêts et à la gestion durable des ressources forestières. En termes des objectifs, 
améliorer le suivi proactif de la déforestation et de la dégradation de forêts grâce à un système de suivi national des forêts solides, sert à renforcer les capacités nationales en suivi des forêts et diffuser les formations à toutes les parties prenantes et pertinentes. À fournir les formations essentielles aux pays pour réaliser des exigences de notification nationale et internationale au titre de la Convention cadre des Nations Unies sur les changements climatiques. Appuyer les gouvernements de notre pays à la prise des décisions et à l'élaboration des politiques relatives à l'utilisation et l'occupation des terres et aux ressources naturelles au niveau environnemental. Et enfin, produire des données de haute qualité et fiables pour suivre les changements de l'utilisation et l'occupation des terres et de la couverture forestière. En termes des approches méthodologiques dans le cadre de ces projets, il y a égard aux trois composantes de ces systèmes, à savoir l'inventaire forestier national, les systèmes de surveillance des terres par satellite, et l'inventaire des gaz à effet de serre. Il est ici de noter que chacune de ces composantes que je viens d'énumérer utilise une méthodologie spécifique bien conçue et adaptée aux circonstances nationales. La photo que vous voyez là, c'est une des méthodes basées surtout sur les inventaires nationaux et ça sert plus à mesurer les arbres sur pied. Quels sont les acteurs et les parties prenantes Le système de suivi national des forêts de la RDC est mis en œuvre par le secrétariat général à l'environnement et développement durable, et ce, à travers la direction du développement durable en ce qui concerne la composante inventaire national des gaz à effet de serre et la direction des inventaires et aménagements forestiers pour les composantes inventaire forestier national et surveillance des terres par satellite. En termes de parties prenantes, je dois vous dire que L'RDC dans ce système est soutenu par beaucoup de parties prenantes, tant nationales qu'internationales. En citant quelques îles, je peux citer la FAO, notre partenaire technique sur le terrain, l'AGICAN, la même chose. La, les services forestiers américains, les ONG internationales, notamment WCS, WWF et WRI. Il y a aussi de ces parties prenantes, il y a des universités comme l'université de Lubumbashi et l'université de Kisangani. Il y a aussi l'observatoire satellitale qui nous appuie aussi dans ces processus. Et là, vous voyez une photo qui a été prise à la fin d'une formation sur les analyses statistiques des données des inventaires forestiers par l'université de Kisangani et l'université de Lubumbashi. En termes de résultats escomptés, nous pouvons dire qu'il y a une mise en place d'une plateforme de consultation technique qui garantit et qui garantit plutôt une meilleure coordination entre partenaires et administrations du ministère de l'Environnement et du Développement Durable. Il y a le renforcement des capacités techniques 
d'une cinquantaine de fonctionnaires de l'administration, notamment à la réalisation des inventaires des gaz à effet de serre, à la planification et gestion des inventaires forestiers, à l'acquisition et traitement des images satellitaires, à l'établissement d'un premier niveau d'émission de référence pour les forêts, l'établissement d'un système de suivi par satellite pour le développement spatial des plantations commerciales intégrées au système national de surveillance de forêt dans notre pays. Il y a un réseau de partage des connaissances sur ces systèmes entre notre pays et les Burkina Faso, les Cameroun, la République du Congo, la Côte d'Ivoire et le Madagascar et en fait l'établissement des portails web permettant la diffusion des informations sur, sur le système national de surveillance de forêt, etc. Cette image montre un peu les portails web de du système national de surveillance des forêts qui a été, qui est le résultat de la surveillance par satellite et, par, et la, la surveillance des terres par satellite. Quels sont les facteurs de succès Il y en a plusieurs, mais nous allons parler de trois. D'abord, il y a au terme d'approche polyvalente. Et ça, c'est le Fonds national RED, FONARED, qui agit comme véhicule financier pour la mise en œuvre de la stratégie nationale RED. Il y a aussi le processus de débat participatif dans ces processus à travers la plateforme technique de concentration PTS. PTS, c'est une plateforme pour le partage technique des questions relatives au système national de surveillance de forêt. Et en fait, il y a plusieurs institutions, comme je l'ai dit tantôt, et organisations qui ont appuyé la conception et la mise en œuvre de ces systèmes, notamment des universités, des centres de recherche, les ONG nationales et internationales comme WCS, WWF, WRI, l'Observatoire satellital des forêts d'Afrique centrale, l'Agence de coopération internationale du Japon, les services des forêts des États-Unis et l'Institut de recherche pour le développement de la France. Dans ces systèmes et dans la mise en œuvre de ces systèmes, il y a eu plusieurs difficultés, mais nous énumérons à peu près quatre que nous, nous trouvons pertinentes. D'abord, les punaises questions de la cohérence des méthodologies utilisées par différents partenaires techniques du ministère de l'Environnement. Deuxièmement, il y a les formations communiquées sur la superficie forestière nationale qui est différente d'un partenaire à un autre, sans se référer aux données fournies par l'administration publique de notre pays. Les niveaux d'appropriation méthodologique et technique par les experts nationaux est très limité, surtout dans les composantes des services et des systèmes de suivi des terres par satellite et d'inventaire forestier national. Et enfin, la sécurité dans certaines zones du pays pour les inventaires forestiers, etc. Les défis à relever. Le premier que nous énumérons, c'est la garantie de la durabilité et la maintenance opérationnelle opérationnel du système. La disponibilité des financements et enfin la coordination du système national de surveillance des forêts, particulièrement la question relative à l'harmonisation des méthodologies et des résultats, y compris l'appropriation du processus 
au niveau provincial. Ainsi dit, par rapport aux résultats que nous avions obtenus, est-il possible qu'il y ait un réplicage de tout ce que nous avions fait dans ce système Nous répondons oui, tout simplement parce que l'expérience et les acquis dans la mise en œuvre des systèmes de suivi des terres par satellite dans notre pays et aussi l'équipe d'experts en télédétection et à la gestion du portail informatique garantissant la durabilité en termes de, co de compétences, de données et de maintenance pourrait servir comme base pour un processus de réplication dans d'autres pays ayant les mêmes contextes de gestion des massifs forestiers. Vous voyez sur ces images, à ma gauche, en haut, vous voyez les gouverneurs de la province de Loire là-bas qui échangeaient en vidéoconférence avec la plateforme SNSF ici à Kishasa. Vous voyez à ma gauche la sensibilisation des communautés avant de commencer des inventaires forestiers dans les hauts Katanga. La sensibilisation des femmes, surtout et des jeunes et des enfants, sur ces processus. Le marquage des arbres pour les équations zalométriques. L'utilisation des lidars terrestres, toujours pour les équations allométriques, le prélèvement des carottes des arbres, aussi pour les équations allométriques, les mesures des densités fraîches sur le terrain, toujours pour les, les équations allométriques, les apprenants de Diaf et de l'Université de Lubumbashi travaillent ensemble, toujours pour les équations allométrique. Je termine mes propos en remerciant d'abord les universités nationales et les centres de recherche, les différentes coopérations bilatérales, notamment la coopération internationale du Japon, les services de forêt des États-Unis, l'Institut de recherche pour le développement de la France, la FAO, l'Observatoire satellital des forêts d'Afrique centrale, les ONG internationales, notamment WCS, WWF, WRI, etc. Sur ce, je ne fais que vous remercier encore une fois pour votre écoute. Et nous sommes là pour répondre à vos questions, j'ai dit, et je vous remercie. Ok, fantastic. Uh, thank you everyone for the patience. I should have explained better how the interpretation worked, and I hope you all managed in the end there to hear the Secretary General's presentation in your language of choice. Um, also, due to connection difficulty, what you just saw was actually a video we recorded prior to this webinar as a backup in case of connection issues. In fact, our connection briefly failed with DRC, but I think now um, that Mr. Uh, Twarambe is back online, and I'd really like to thank him for giving this insight into the experience gained in DRC of the process of setting up a national forest monitoring system, including the difficulties faced and the results obtained so far. Um, now it's time for the Q&A session, some discussion, and um, please everyone don't hesitate to write your questions in the Q&A box and we'll do your best to get around to them. If I can, I'd like to start with a question to Mr. Twarambe. Um, so the CBIT, as its name suggests, um, aims to build national capacities and acts to improve various elements of the NFM system, including institutional elements and technical and human capacity needs. You showed a slide in your presentation, a photo of a group of people who had just completed a training. 
And I've read that in DRC recently, over 50 staff have been trained on land cover change detection, including on field data collection and cutting edge activities such as the web portal you showed us in your presentation and using high resolution, uh, resolution satellite images for detecting forest degradation and, and monitoring peatlands. So my question then to you is, um, why is capacity building something that is integral to the functioning of such a system? Can you share with us some of the main lessons learned from the capacity development activities in DRC? And you also mentioned how the experience of DRC is being shared with other countries in the Congo Basin and beyond. Could you tell me a bit more about how DRC as a country with such a huge and diverse area of forest of global importance in terms of climate regulation and biodiversity, as well as a host of other reasons, can ensure its experiences and positive steps extend beyond its borders, um, leading the potential for upscaling? Over to you, Mr. Twarambe. Do we still have Mr. Twarambe online? Can someone confirm? I see him online, but probably he's having some issues with his connectivity. Okay. Okay, then um, in that case, sorry, everyone, I will move on to the second, second question that I have. Um, in the hope that Mr. Twarambe can join us hopefully later in the session. So my question is now to Rumi, as someone with valuable experience working in the wider region to tell us more about initiatives in other countries. Could you tell us a little bit more about scaling up the work done in forest monitoring in DRC, Rumi, to, to the region, the subregion, and beyond? Thanks. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Remy. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Um, I think uh, I think Mr. Toyrombe is got a problem with his uh, connection, and he's with another person who has access but who can't get inside the panel. So, if we could move Emé as a speaker, that would be great. Anyway, sorry. Um, I'm just coming back to your question, uh, Emily. Yes, the, what what we're doing at, at national level um, can get scaled up. Actually. All the, all the efforts we are doing at national level help us learn lesson and build up um, um, methodologies. Alors, vous me suivez? Ah. Monsieur le secrétaire général, oui, on vous entend. Voilà. Uh, pour la, la première question de renforcement des, des capacités, uh, je pense que comme la exprimé un peu madame Émilie, il y a, nous avons une grande superficie de forêt, donc une grande étendue de forêt, donc ça demande plus de capacité. Nous savons que euh, il y a il y beaucoup de jeunes gens qui sont informés, mais ce sont des formations académiques qui, ont, qui sont très importantes, Mais sur le terrain, il faut d'autres renforcements de capacités sur le plan pratique. Euh, mais aujourd'hui, avec ces systèmes, euh, au début, ce n'était pas si facile parce que les images qu'on utilisait à l'époque avaient, par exemple, trop de nuages. Et qu'aujourd'hui, avec les espaces à résolution, à haute résolution, Donc, on va un peu à d'autres technologies pour à d'autres technologies. Donc, il a fallu que on se focalise sur le renforcement des capacités, raison pour laquelle euh, je remercie tous les partenaires et qui nous a aidé à accompagner la mise en œuvre d'une manière opérationnelle de notre système national de surveillance des forêts et surtout, et comme je le disais, avec l'implication de tout le monde. Et surtout euh, de tous les partenaires. Donc, euh, aussi dans ces renforcements de capacités et en concertation avec d'autres partenaires et d'autres parties prenantes, nous sommes arrivés même à avoir le niveau de référence. Euh, 
qui a été même publié au niveau de la Convention euh, cadre des Nations Unies sur le changement climatique. Euh, ce renforcement des capacités nous a aidé aussi à harmoniser les méthodologies utilisées. Par exemple, dans les cadres des inventaires forestiers, dans les cadres de la géomatique, dans les cadres des inventaires de gaz à effet de serre. Euh, ce renforcement des capacités nous aide aujourd'hui à, à suivre la conformité même des données qui ont été inventoriées à l'époque. Euh, cet renforcement des capacités vraiment nous a aidé, beaucoup aidé euh, et ça a aidé beaucoup tous nos les trois composantes euh, pour avoir vraiment des éléments qui peuvent se défendre, qui peuvent produire des données fiables. Et aujourd'hui, euh, je peux vous dire sincèrement que la RDC a, est quand même euh, avec, avec l'appui des partenaires, bien sûr, à produire des données. Il faut. Donc voilà un peu pour cette question, euh, les éléments de réponse que je pouvais répondre. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Twambe, for highlighting. Oh, I am in the wrong language channel. <laughs> I was hearing myself being translated. Um, <laughs> So yes, thank you very much for highlighting the importance of developing capacities also in order to develop lessons learned that can be drawn upon by neighboring countries and anyone anywhere involved in forest monitoring. So thank you very much for jumping in there and, and answering your question. Um, I'll pass the floor back to Remy. I can repeat the question uh, for Remy, which was about a um, similar question about scaling up the work done in forest monitoring in the DRC to the sub-region and beyond. Over to you, Remy. Thank you, Emily. Um, yeah, I was, um, I was just saying that um, South House cooperation is really essential and we've been, we've been favoring those, those exchanges so that uh, experience shared by countries, lessons learned in exercises in countries can be, can be taken and can help build, uh, build better initiatives. And as I mentioned during the presentation, um, we have we have been um, preparing NFIs and NFMS for a lot of countries, uh, not only throughout uh, the traditional NFMA, but also with a huge impact on the on the Red Cross program. And those those past, uh, it's it's more than than two decades that we've been uh, we've been helping countries set up NFIs and uh, and related data. And uh, we now have very mature, very robust methodologies that can be scaled up, especially using uh, um, the, um, all the possibilities of the internet and cloud computing uh, platforms. So everything that's related to mapping and satellite uh, image analysis, for instance, can now be done at very large scales with tools that are easily handled by, um, by uh, national, um, national experts, as the Mr. Secretary General showed. And uh, just to give two examples, we have two projects at the moment, one in Central Africa, um, funded by CAFI, uh, that will look at drivers of deforestation and degradation using those cloud computing tools um, and, um, and using the information from the NFMS from each of those countries to understand and to tailor exactly the focus on the drivers. And we will be doing something extremely similar in West Africa, um, uh, focusing on the, on the EcoWest region. So yeah, it's really important and, and the experience from countries help us build those robust methodologies. There are things that cannot be harmonized, but, uh, and it's, it's always complex when it is definitions, for instance, but, um, but for the tools to monitor, we, we can really uh, now uh, say that we have tools that can enable these large scale regional um, um, initiatives. And uh, this is what we're pushing for. Thanks a lot, Remy. Um, speaking of refining national forest monitoring systems, I have a question now for Rocio. Uh, Rocio, your presentation briefly touched on the new tool to assess national forest monitoring systems based on the voluntary guidelines on national forest monitoring. Um, the tool is intended to help prioritize actions for improving NFMS and no doubt helping countries collect, analyze and disseminate forest related data. And, and therefore in preparing to respond to the transparency framework under the Paris Agreement, um, I was wondering, if, would you be able to elaborate a little bit more on how the tool can help 
DRC and other countries in general um, and discuss some of the advantages of open data. Um, why do we need to move towards open data and increase transparency? Why is it so important now to talk about open data over to you, Rocio? Thank you very much, uh, Emily. And um, well, I, I have to say that the tool uh, facilitates, as mentioned, uh, the identification of needs and gaps uh, in order to establish or strengthen the national forest monitoring system. So it's very comprehensive assessment that can be carried out. And of course, uh, this tool uh, complements very much the series of free open source tools that FAO has developed, such as the Open Forest and the CIPL, which facilitates data collection, analysis, and reporting. Uh, COVID-19 has increased uh, awareness about the power of data sharing. We hope that this motivates government and forest monitoring practitioners to share forest data, actually. And at the same time, it's important that open uh, databases follow standards um, to minimize misuse and misinterpretation. We believe that open forest data can strengthen our collective effort to identify and apply uh, solutions for forests. In this context, of course, the National Forest Monitoring System, a robust one, a sustainable one, uh, that is transparent, reliable, relevant, accessible, uh, can support climate action on the ground. Back to you, Emily. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Rocio. Um, th similarly to open data, one other thing that the tool can be used for is, is like as a springboard for collaboration because it can bring together various stakeholders in an exercise of evaluation and work planning. And I think this is a valuable aspect as well of the tool and one which I think relates to the experience of DRC where a significant success factor, um, as highlighted during the presentation, uh, during the creation of DRC's National Forest Monitoring System was and has been its uh, participatory nature, as highlighted by Mr. Twarambe. And there, the design and uh, implementation have been supported by a range of participants, including universities, NGOs, government agencies. This was all mentioned in the, in the presentation. And I think that has helped to make it a truly useful system with applications not just in in red plus but also forest management and land monitoring in general relating to agriculture as well and land use planning um so i was hoping to ask another question to mr twarambe if you are able to connect again this time hopefully um could you share your experiences of the participatory process um did it lead to better collaboration on other issues um, and were there sometimes difficulties maybe to take into consideration everyone's needs? Thanks. Over to you. Uh, uh, sorry to interrupt. Maybe uh, you want to make sure that Mr. Turambe is in the off, uh, in the main room. So he has to click on off in the interpretation button. Hello, you me suivez? Monsieur le Secretary General, avec Aimé, you devez vous mettre sur le channel d'interprétation off. Parce que là, vous êtes sur français et du coup, on vous entend très mal. En bas, là, il y a une petite planète, il faut cliquer sur off. On vous entend, mais vous êtes un peu loin. Maintenant, vous me suivez Je ne sais pas si vous êtes. Oui, c'est bon, Émilie Ok, allez-y. Ça va Oui, ça va. Bien. Yeah. Je disais que dans ce processus de surveillance, des systèmes de surveillance de forêt dans notre pays, ça a été un élément très important. Important tout simplement parce que même depuis que nous avions élaboré notre loi, on a privilégié l'approche participative dans la gestion durable des forêts. Raison pour laquelle même dans, ces, dans, ces, dans les surveillances, c'est-à-dire dans les surveillances et dans le cadre du processus RED, 
on doit inclure toutes les parties prenantes. Que ce soit dans l'élaboration de la méthodologie, parce que les capacités aujourd'hui, elles ne sont pas seulement dans l'administration seule, mais vous trouvez là, il y a des capacités au niveau de la société civile, au niveau de certains acteurs, que, par exemple, les universités. Parce qu'aujourd'hui, avec les attributions des universités, il y a l'enseignement, il y a la recherche. Donc, toutes ces capacités euh, doivent être euh, appelées à contribuer dans ces systèmes. Raison pour laquelle euh, nous avions fait appel à toutes ces capacités pour travailler ensemble. C'est-à-dire, nous avions mis un système de collaboration entre toutes les structures qui, peut, et qui pouvaient apporter quelque chose à répondre à la gestion durable des forêts et surtout à l'élaboration de notre système national de surveillance des forêts. Et c'est ça un peu l'élément de clasher, c'est à partir de la loi de gestion, sur la, 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 les codes forestiers jusqu'à présent. Alors, par la suite, sur les terrains. Je vais vous donner un exemple très simple. Parfois, vous êtes en forêt, vous êtes dans la forêt de haut katanga par exemple. Les équipes des inventaires forestiers, on les suspecte que ce sont des chercheurs de mines. Et vous avez des problèmes, si vous n'expliquez pas bien les choses, au chef coutumier, au notable de la place, vous avez des problèmes de faire du travail sur le terrain. Alors, conséquence, il faut commencer par appeler tout le monde à leur expliquer, à leur faire comprendre que euh, ce système, c'est pour la bonne gestion des ressources forestières que nous avons. Et les, 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 les restes des choses fonctionnent très, très bien. Donc voilà un peu pour nous euh, l'élément le plus important qui nous a amené à, à travailler, c'est-à-dire à utiliser ces systèmes de la participation de toutes les parties prenantes dans, dans, no, dans notre système national de surveillance des forêts. Thank you very much. I think there was another issue there, unfortunately, with the interpretation. Um, but I think I'll move on. Sorry about that. Um, so thank you, Mr. Twarambe, for highlighting yet again the fundamental um, importance of capacity building uh, and collaboration with research and academia and really developing a fully functional monitoring system that incorporates the needs of many stakeholders to deliver information for multiple purposes. Uh, you mentioned the collaboration with universities in your um, presentation and I know that so many people right now are have just started or are just about to start to return to university or begin university um, or school and they're facing considerable uncertainty about how they will be able to continue their learning paths and studies in the face of this pandemic and I know that um, the CBIT Forest project was originally intended to have many face-to-face -face event events all of which had to be cancelled like most other events due to the outbreak of COVID-19. So I was hoping to ask another question to Rocio. Rocio, would you be able to uh, share with us your experience of having to very quickly adapt your capacity building approach to the sudden crisis, um, shifting from face-to-face -face events uh, to developing online webinars like this one and, and also the e-learning materials that you mentioned. What, what did you have to change and moving forward which aspects have you found valuable and will keep up? Thank you very much, Emily. Um, the global pandemic ha caused, uh, caused the cancellation of face-to-face -face, uh, capacity development activities, which at the same time is stimulatedly uh, and rapidly accelerate achieved toward an effective distance learning paths. It also encourages us uh, to diversify delivery solution that ensures the transfer of know-how, knowledge, skill, and competencies through different methodologies. And uh, I would like to thank that also to the FAWI Learn Academy and the team of Christina Pretraki because uh, we are working together um, on, on different products, which includes the self-paced e-learning that I just presented, uh, the international technical webinars we are running, 
online workshops as well as uh, an upcoming massive open online course that will be held at the end of November of this year. So I think uh, we have tried to do our best to adapt to this situation. However, uh, let me highlight that what, uh, what made uh, this possible is not only organizational adaptation to these new conditions, but also the ability and willingness of the audience uh, to take advantage of uh, learning tools. Back to you, Emily. Thanks, thanks a lot, Rocio. Yeah, uh, Remy, relating to this last point, about the current pandemic and the new approaches and ways of working, including Zoom, like we are right now, uh, that many of us are currently navigating. Would you be able to tell us a little bit about how technology and cloud computing, because I know that you are an expert in these topics, can help countries monitor land cover and how this is helping now during the pandemic? Yeah, thanks, Emily. Um, yeah, I've, I've seen uh, uh, quite a couple of questions in the chat that are related to this. Um, one thing that is really important uh, is that the, the cloud computing platform and cloud computing tools that exist are very powerful, but they're, they can be complicated to use. They are, they are based on codes. And uh, what we have done in FAO through the Open Forest Initiative, and in particular the CEPAL platform, I will put the links to, to those, uh, to those um, uh, tools in the chat later, um, can, can really, easily enable people to access those tools and, and, um, and, um, and, and computing power. Um, and because it's working online, because it's working on distant servers, you don't, you don't need to have a strong connection to download data. You don't need to have a, a strong bandwidth to, to get those huge amount of data that are available out there. You actually use those platforms to on the cloud process the data make it run on distant servers, which are really powerful, and you only download the, the easy results. And this has been extremely well illustrated uh, during the pandemic by DRC uh, itself. As, uh, as um, Secretary General mentioned, the DIAF managed to do a full mapping of deforestation and degradation events uh, during the period 2016-2018, which is a, an update of its national uh, forest data set. Uh, during the pandemic, people were using those cloud computing platforms from home and they, they actually managed to finish, they finished in the month of August. And these, this tool in turn, it will now be used for validation. And uh, I'm referring back to uh, one of the questions in the chat, which is regarding the, the frequency at which we can monitor those events. The, the data that will be made available through the NIC procurement um, is monthly. And we will have like monthly cloud free mosaics, extremely high resolution. So we'll be in a position to monitor any of those events that are happening and we'll be able to validate and see what's happening behind. And there was also a question regard, uh, that was asking what financial partners can do to improve um, the, the capabilities of countries to monitor their forests. This is exactly the kind of data that can really leverage and can really make a difference because you don't need to go to the field to be able to monitor those things. You can you can actually work extremely quickly in a very robust manner to, to get some uh, crucial information that's, that can be used for decision making and for intervention. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Remy. Also for that, um, some recent good news that's really, really innovative and really great that uh, they were able to map degradation during the pandemic. It's a uh, degradation is a particularly tricky to detect and even more so to monitor and it's pretty inspiring work done in a really short time and under adverse circumstances under the lockdown um, and it's something that will contribute to better estimation of uh, emissions from DRC's forests and along with the national forest monitoring system as a whole which I've really enjoyed learning about today it's going to contribute ultimately to clear more transparent reporting for more ambitious climate action hopefully and uh, I think that's a good point to end on I think. Uh, so I will hand over now to Mr. Julian Fox, the leader of FAO's team supporting national forest monitoring. And he's going to get, give us some concluding remarks. Thanks for being here today, Julian. Over to you. Thanks so much, Emily. Thanks so much, everybody, for joining us in this brave new world of virtual seminars. 
Thank you, Secretary General. Um, well, FAO is honoured to accompany countries and forest stakeholders on their journey toward more transparent forest data that is essential for the Paris Agreement. For forest data, FAO's starting point is the voluntary guidelines for national forest monitoring, which advocates for multi-purpose national forest monitoring systems. And I encourage you to use this publication, which has now also become integrated into the NFMS assessment tool developed under the CIBIT Forest Project. As has been said, FAO has developed innovative platforms to support countries like DRC on forest monitoring, such as Open Forest and CEPAL. We're really proud that CEPAL has been catalytic in enabling national forest monitoring data generation for deforestation and degradation in DRC, even through the COVID-19 pandemic. Exciting news today is, is the announcement of new monthly cloud-free high-resolution imagery for all tropical countries from the Norwegian International Climate and Forest Initiative. This is particularly relevant for countries like DRC with persistent cloud cover and can advance our efforts to measure monitor and report forests. FAO looks forward to integrating this new data into our geospatial platform such as CEPAL and supporting countries in making maximum use of this incredible resource. The National Forest Monitoring System of DRC is an excellent example of a multi-purpose system supporting both data provision for reporting and supporting national needs for decision making and land management. I would like to highlight four key elements of the DR system from DRC system from which other countries can learn. It provides transparent, reliable, and credible data, that key data provision function for international reporting for measurement, reporting, and verification. Other reporting needs are now transitioning into the enhanced transparency framework of the Paris Agreement. DRC did this by developing protocols, methodologies, and tools to standardize and ensure the quality, comparability, and compatibility of the information provided. Secondly, if a, uh, DRC makes data accessible to both national and international stakeholders through the development of a national web portal demonstrated by the Secretary General today. This includes geospatial data, documentation, and actually everything a stakeholder could desire. This is essential, particularly for national stakeholders, as well as the international community who follow DRC's progress. The development of DRC's National Forest Monitoring System has been highly participatory, inclusive of a range of stakeholders, such as universities, civil society, relevant government agencies, as well as regional and international organizations, such as FAO. It produces relevant data for multiple needs, it has key functions to provide data that is relevant to forest and land management in DRC with cross-sectoral uh, integration. Another key feature is key roles and responsibilities for the NFMS, which ensures sustainability. In DRC, the NFMS has been institutionalized and is a part of official government structure. In summary, as FAO, we are honored to support DRC and other key forest countries on the continuous improvement of their national forest monitoring systems. And we're very pleased to share this example of DRC's system. We hope this can trigger South-South and triangular cooperation between DRC and other countries. My closing comment, I would like to convey that higher levels of transparency can facilitate higher levels of ambition our shared vision is that transparent, reliable, relevant, accessible, and sustainable forest data can support climate action on the ground. And as we've seen here today in DRC, continuous improvement can then support high levels of ambition, which is so desperately needed at this critical moment in our history. Thank you very much for your valuable time today. Thank you for bearing with us through, as always, some technical glitches but I'm really pleased and I think the technical message has come across and thank you so much to DRC for taking the time to share your experience. Have a fantastic day and back to Emily to bid everyone a fair day and uh, thank you again. Thanks so much, Julian, for your summary, drawing out the key strengths and points of interest in DRC's National Forest Monitoring System and for emphasizing what it's all about really, that is transparent, accurate data for better management of forests to better help us limit climate change. So I would like to do thanks, give a big thank you to Julian, Rocio, Remy, Christina, and especially to Mr. Twarambe for joining us today here uh, on Zoom and to, of course, everyone else who helped organize 
and of course to all of you for participating today. Thank you so much. Um, I've noticed there are lots of questions in the Q&A box and we've done our best to respond to these. We've gotten through about 50%, I think. Um, sorry that we haven't managed to get through all of them. Thank you for the engagement and asking all the questions. We will respond to all questions um, in a follow-up email um, and we will be sharing also the recording of this event. So uh, thank you all so much for your valuable, inter valuable interaction and contribution to the dialogue. We wish you all a great day and take care of yourselves. Thanks. Bye bye everyone. Au revoir. Merci beaucoup. Au revoir, merci. Bye Au revoir. Bye. bye. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, everybody. Merci. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.